Guys, Mark Goldberg here from Mark Vlogs Watches with a quick word for your friend and mine, Archie Luxury, Paul Pluta, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III. You know, he invented the quick whist watch check, and uh, the rest of us on YouTube, well, we just stole it. Help keep Archie full-time on YouTube by liking this video, watching this video, tell your fuckhead friends, and make sure to subscribe to his Patreon. And now, Archie Luxury. Hi, guys. I'm Paul Pluter and welcome to the Archie Luxury and the Paul Pluter channel. Today guys, this is an emergency video. This is for all the travelers in the audience there. Quick, quick, quick whist watch check. I'm wearing a Patek Philippe 5196. And today guys, what I'm making this video on is, this is for travelers and this is the, the title of the video, Do Not Travel with too many luxury watches. Now, <clears throat> I got to tell you guys, the world is getting incredibly fucking nasty. It is getting incredibly fucking nasty. Okay, what's happened is, if you look around the world there, <clears throat> governments are broke. They are absolutely fucking skintus. So, <clears throat> they are clamping down on the rules. Okay, they're clamping down on the rules. And what's happened is the number of tax-free countries, when I say tax-free, these are countries that don't have sales tax, GST, or VAT, is shrinking. Uh, the only country that comes to mind is Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Dubai recently added 5% tax, VAT, GST, whatever you call it. Singapore has had 7% for a decade or more, and uh, used to be tax-free. The world is getting more and more nasty. So if you are a watch enthusiast, if you are a watch lover, a watch traveler, what is the advice to do? And uh, I got to tell you, man, I would love to honestly travel with a, uh, a, a box like this full of beautiful timepieces when I travel. However, guys, not a fucking good idea. No, nope, not even four watches. Nope, 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 nope. See, what's happened is we're in a very, very interesting time. The time period we're in is like no other time period in history. We have never had travel has been so affordable and so cheap. Airfares have uh, largely stayed the same against inflation. In the 1970s, to fly to England from Australia was about $1,500 to $2,000. The difference is, is that that was a hell of a lot more money in the 1970s. A lot more buying power than today. So, what is happening well, we've got the collector, the watch enthusiast who wants to go and see the world. And let me tell you some horror stories. Absolute horror, horribilious stories. When you land in a country, what happens is you have something which is called a... What do you have? You have a customs... Declaration. And when you land, you need to fill this form out. And it will, will ask you a number of questions. It will ask you things like your, your full name, your passport number, your flight you came from, your address, blah, blah, where you're going to stay. Uh, it'll ask you some sensitive questions like, uh, are you carrying, <clears throat> are you carrying illegal pornography, firearms or illicit drugs? Are you carrying more than 25 cigarettes? Are you carrying more than, um, are you carrying more than 2.2 more than 2.25 litres of alcohol. It'll ask you things like, are you carrying 
goods obtained overseas with a combined total price of more than a thousand dollars and then they'll ask you are you carrying more than ten thousand dollars in cash now every country has a slightly different variation but global governments <clears throat> thank the un they've all got a similar sort of form so what is the rules what are the rules and what is the situation well, technically, this would mean everybody who wears a expensive watch would need to declare it. Now, there is a little bit of leniency. What countries will do is they basically will say, well, you're allowed to take one watch in. That's your personal property exempted from this form. Now, it doesn't actually say that, but that's technically what happens. You may be able to even claim a second watch. This is my personal watches. This is, I got one for this, one for that. My advice is don't try and take in more than two. Okay? Don't try and take in more than two. See, if you take in a whole stack of them, they want duty. Let me tell you a couple of horror stories and I will put articles in the description that back up what I'm telling you. What happened at Beezle World? Beezle World. So some journalists were going to Beezle World to cover the watch event. Naturally, journalists who cover watches would also be enthusiasts. They, they, they like watches. One guy <clears throat> brought in five or six watches, stopped at the border. What are these watches? How come you haven't declared them? He wasn't selling them overseas. This was just his own little collection to show people. And when he left Bezel, Basel World, he would take the watches back home with him. But no, the customs official said, you've got, why have you got commercial quantities? That's the term, commercial quantities. And this is the problem, see. If you have many, many watches with you, commercial quantities, fuckers, you can get into big trouble. <clears throat> Basically, in his case there, he had to pay several thousand dollars worth of customs duty. Yes. Now, the problem is, Okay, so say you pay this money. So, well, that's okay. I'm happy to pay the money. They don't like to give it back on your way out. See, it's a one-way squeeze. It's a one-way squeeze. And this is the frightening thing. <clears throat> the journalist who went to Basel World had to pay duty on these fucking vintage watches he was taking in. They weren't even really good watches. Another horror case, a good friend of mine, I know a friend of a friend of a friend. He lives in Bangkok. He's a pommy. He's, a, he's an English guy. He was going back home for Christmas to see Ur indoors at home. He's got two Ur indoors, one in Thailand, one in England, and one on the side, fuckers. He left Thailand with five vintage Rolex, <clears throat> went to England, went through okay. Came back to Thailand six weeks later. They nabbed him for taking these watches into the country. And he said, well, where do you think that these came from? T Argue, talk to the hand, talk to the hand. <clears throat> it's a disaster. America, the land of the free. TSA agents. TSA agents. You know what Tony Soprano said about the TSA agents? Yes, yes, yes. I'll put a link link in this video here to the, the Tony Soprano clip on the TSA agents. <clears throat> Rolex 
doesn't allow their product to even be taken into the country without their express written permission. I don't know how the fuck Rolex managed to get that. But they did. How the fuck does that uh, happen? That's what I would really, really, really like to know. How the fuck do they get away with that? I want to tell you another story. Good friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. This guy's a watch dealer in Singers. He went to Bangkok, went to Bangkok uh, to, to trade watches, buy and sell a few, sell a few of his, buy a few and go back to Singapore. Guess what? He goes in, he, he lands at the airport, the watches went through, they ex, so he went in and his wife went in. He went through okay with all the, they were actually Patek Philippe's. They x-rayed her luggage and they saw a whole stack of Patek boxes. What they let her go through, then they nabbed the couple. The watches, he had to pay duty on all these Patek Philippe's. He had to pay duty. Now, he wasn't even going to sell them all. He was just taking him there to do some trade. Fly back home. This is his business. It ain't much of a fucking business if you're nabbed at the airport. Is he doing anything really, really wrong? No, he's just buying and selling watches for fuck's sake. <clears throat> they don't see it this way. Let me tell you, Thailand themselves there... They're changing the rules. Everybody will be screened. Everybody will be screened from 2020. If you've got five or six watches on you, you're fucking nabbed. That's exactly it. And don't worry. They know the good brands. Patek, Rolex, all the expensive brands. And the ties. They know how to use Google. They know how to use Google. Rumor has it, they get a percentage of the take in fines. Yes, beautiful. So, what is the answer then? What is the answer with taxes and duty and all that sort of shit? Well, <clears throat> I got to be completely honest with you. It's a fucked world. When they talk about globalization and free trade, they're not talking about it. For the small guy, they're talking about it for big end of town, not the small guy. My honest advice is I would not travel with more than three luxury watches. I usually travel with two, two watches. Um, I basically have a dress watch and I have an every day sort of watch. I, I wouldn't be traveling with four or five watches. No, 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 no. Definitely not. Definitely not. Technically speaking, if you've got a Rolex, anything Amiga onwards up, you've got to declare it. You're supposed to declare it. It's supposed to be declared. Now, that's, that's following the letter of the law. See, this is how world governments and evil governments work. They let you get away with it. But in the fine print, you should have always declared it. So, to be honest with you, I think, honestly, be careful. Be careful. Hong Kong, no problem. Take as many fucking watches in as you like. Take as many in as you like. Hong Kong, no problems. All these other countries, it's fucked. It's all fucked. The world is clamping down and they do it under fictitious names. Anti-money laundering, anti-corruption, anti-this. Well, what about my right 
as a consumer to take my goods to different countries. Not to fucking sell to the maggots in your country, but just for my own pleasure. I seriously, I seriously think you need to be very careful. This is a vicious world. It's not a friendly place. It's nasty. Governments are not your friend. Governments are not your friend. They're out to fuck you over big time. If you're traveling <clears throat> overseas, limit the number of high-end luxury watches you are taking. There will come a time where all your, all your off-ledger assets will be taxed. There will be a wealth tax coming, guys. It's inevitable. We're having EU one government in Europe. America. The Trumpster will get booted out eventually. Governments are broke. Aging population. They're really fucking broke. Let me tell you this, guys. You be very careful. Non, non-ledger assets are becoming a thing of the past. So my advice is, personally, two watches per person. That's it. Two watches per person. Leave, leave the boxes at home. Do not ever travel with the boxes. Also, when I travel, what do I do? What do I do? I'll tell you exactly what I do so there is never any problems. This is my, my carry bag when I'm traveling. I have a full list of serial numbers to my watches. Full list of serial numbers. This is a photocopy of the original certificates. And this here... These papers, these, this, is the, this is a photocopy of the original certificate. It tells you the date, the watch. This case was 1999. That's for my, my annual calendar. My, five two, my 5127, April 2008. 5110. Actually, that one's undated, but that model hasn't been made for over 10 years. Um... I've got my 5296, August 08. I travel with these papers here. Also, my Reverso <clears throat> has got an engraving on the back with the date, 2012. It was a gift from my wife at the time. <clears throat> Believe you me, the world is getting more and more nastier as governments get more and more desperate for money, your money. The problem with socialism is eventually you run out of other people's money to spend. So they need to make ways to thieve it from you. Believe you me, free trade, globalization, that's for the big boys, not for little traveler. So do not, do not take your collection with you. Be very, very careful. Not only is it dangerous too, it's very dangerous. London! London is, you'll get your fucking hand chopped off for your watch. My best advice is, bank safe, put your watches in the bank safe before you go. I personally, what have I done? I've got three bank safes. Yes, three. Because I don't trust any government. I've got a bank safe in Australia. I got a bank safe in Singapore. I got a bank safe in Hong Kong. Three. Three bank safes. That's correct. Three bank safes. Because you never know what will happen in the world. My advice to you is do not travel with more than two watches. I'm Paul Pluto. This has been a video for my audience. This has been made for purely entertainment purposes. If you are a government official from
from a nasty fucking country with nasty heavy taxes. This video is purely comic relief. Nothing in this video is factual or actually real. It's purely made for Google revenue, which you're entitled to tax me on. It's purely made to bring in interest to my channel so I can be a good law-abiding citizen. Please be careful. I'm Paul Pluto. Tell me what you fuckeroonies think of that. <laughs>Hey Archie Luxury fans, if you're into luxury, then you gotta be into 66 Buick Rivieras. Check out my son and I, Alex, as we restore this beautiful 66 Buick. Neighbors are having a picnic, you know, having fun and stuff. Me, I'm doing cars. It's what I've done my whole life. David S.W. David S.W. David S.W. Who does Archie Luxury recommend is the greatest grey market dealer in America? There's only one choice. David S.W. That's right, guys. I've got to tell you the honest truth. I have, for a long time, been looking for the perfect answer. Who do I recommend people go to see? Who do I recommend that people can go and uh, buy watches. And I've got to be honest with you, the greatest, the greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet is David SW. David SW, David SW, David SW.com. That's right, guys. I have been looking for a contact who I can very nicely refer people too. I am not in the selling business. Customer service. I'm too old to sell watches. I'm too old. I like to recommend my viewers to a reliable source. In Australia, I've got some great sources. There's uh, Sydney Watch Exchange with Cove. Rani at Vintage Watch Co. Shani. Shani at European Watch Gallery. And in America, who is the best source for pre-owned Rolex, for all the hot models, there's only one person I would recommend, David SW. David SW, David SW. That is the premier source for pre-owned Rolex. I gotta be completely frank and honest with you. Guys, if you are looking for a hot Rolex model, there is only one place you can go to. David SW, David SW, David SW. Let's be honest, guys. There's no point schmoozing, schmoozing, schmoozing the dealers, the ADs. They're just a waste of time. Unless you're going to buy 20 pieces, you are wasting your time. What you're better off to do is pay the market premium and go to a good, good pre-owned dealer. Who do I recommend? David SW. David SW. David SW. That's correct, guys. I want to tell you this now. I 100% stand behind David SW. David SW, the greatest pre-owned dealer in the entire United States of America. That's right. The greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, for Patek Philippe, for Audemars Piguet, David S.W. He even does things like F.P. Jean. David S.W. David S.W. David S.W. That's right. If you want to buy a pre-owned Rolex, a Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, there's only one good source I would recommend. David S.W. David S.W. David S.W. I'm Paul Pluto, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III, and I'm proud to recommend David S.W. See you later. Thank you for watching this channel.